India's list of celebrities runs long. However, very few make the nation's feet tap to their beats as rhythmically as Rajkumar Singhajit Singh, one of India's most renowned Manipuri dancers. Guru Singhajit Singh has been performing and teaching the exotic Manipuri styles of dances in Delhi's Triveni Kala Sangam, thus propagating his native dance forms since the past 42 years. He however insists that what he has done is just a drop in the ocean. Lots remain to be done. I'm only a very small part of a big effort. We cannot take everything for granted. While trying not to change the structure of the art, the nature of the art, while trying to preserve the purity of it, we cannot take propagation for granted. So one has to find ways and means that art copes with its changes. So this is what is required. So many people think that by preservation means we remain the same old thing and no change. That has is a very, very important role to play. At the same time, those who are working for widening the horizon of the art form, for widening awareness both within and outside, they are also very important. They increase the range of the art in terms of presentation, in terms of experimentation. Lots are happening and all these sides are necessary. Every aspect of it is very important. And I think capable artists, great minds will keep on working from time to time and uh, well, with some luck, they will succeed. Surprisingly, Singhjit, unlike most other famous dancers, did not take to dancing in his childhood. He claims to have drifted into dancing in his early teens, after having learned drumming and singing. However, once into dancing, he developed a passion for it. I started learning as a drummer, which must have taken about three to four years, not many years, because I shifted to singing afterwards. After singing, I took to dance because finally I decided I was born to dance, I must dance, and I, I liked it, to be a dancer anyway. So that I spent about um, eight to ten years learning at the feet of my guru. And uh, those were the most productive years of my life in terms of assimilation of knowledge. I'm <laughs> Unlike most Manipuri male dancers, Singhajit did not opt for Sankirtanas, which are more lucrative and is a style high in demand. Instead, he chose Jagoi, the pure dance style, a tough path. Most of the male members of the family, most of the male members in society used to learn some Sankirtan because there is always a demand, there was always a demand for the neighborhood Sankirtan, for death, for childbirth, for weddings.
jagoi aspect or the dance aspect as one understands now because the word dance implies many things in manipuri jagoi cholom and even the martial arts to some extent but the jagoi as we know in ras leela goshta leela etc for these uh, boys went for training all right but not many because the demand for them in this field was not very much that is why many boys go for sankirtan training but for only dance jagoi that fewer boys go because this is a challenging profession they have to be a great success to be able to survive by dancing or by teaching my main feel is jagoi as is done in ras leela as is done in goshta leela then my second training is for cholom as is done in sankirtana then the third training in martial arts another move that was considered out of the ordinary was singajit's decision to come to delhi leaving behind the safe precinct of manipur where dancing is sacred and a full fledged office functions to look into the affairs of dancers the booking of the artist itself is a very interesting thing he maintains a diary a panchang traditional panchang all you have to see if is if that day is free if it is free with his permission you just write down your name address occasion and he is booked he cannot get out of it if it is already filled in if he discovers that i am a rich person booking him he has accepted a poor person's performance he won't ever get out of it because performance for the performer is a religious duty for as it is dharma no artist ever gets out of it and traditionally too he is liable to be punished mm. because we have an office called pala loisan who looks after the regulation of the artists singajit's coming to delhi was as interesting as other things in his life he was offered a position in delhi at the recommendation of the then sangeet natak academy secretary shrimati nirmala joshi who was impressed by singajit's performances before two prime ministers i came in the year 1954 towards the end of 1954 i must have been about 20 maybe a little more than 20 and miss joshi happened to visit manipur that was the time when i was performing for the two prime ministers prime minister of india jawaharlal nehru and the prime minister of burma uh, mr unu once in delhi singajit started teaching a varied group of aspiring dancers one of them charu mathur is his wife professional partner and soulmate today he's always been a very sensitive individual very extremely sensitive and uh, we have we've had a wonderful time together i think we've had a very very successful and fruitful uh, as husband and wife and as professionals the younger generation also looks up to him if i do, if i have to do something he is like always very keen and very helpful and he keeps giving me tips and all he is like very nice but as a father he is so strict aur main manipur se aate imphal se aur guru ji ne hum log ko bahut pyar se karti hai aur guru ji jaisa hum log ban sakta janna chahta hai isliye hum log abhi dance sikhte hai guru ji ke sath aur guru ji bhi bhi bahut mehnat se sikhte hai in our manipuri dance he is what he is creating is it's very new no because uh, our all the tradition dance is going on but what he is doing is new things so we are proud because what he is creating is new things for us acknowledging his dedication the government honored him with some of the highest honors of the country including the padma shri award despite all this success guru singh ji singh remains a humble person with a dream of making manipuri dance popular in every corner of the country 
and to inculcate pride in being Indian in the youth. One has to be proud of one's tradition. However much I try, I am not going to become anything else. So success has to come from within. So one has to develop the qualities one is born with culturally, biologically, ethnically. Then also one has to imbibe the great knowledge that the world of civilization, the civilized world has to offer from any part of the world. And that adds quite a lot to our ability to understand even our own things. And whatever I'm speaking is not anything new. Many people have spoken the same thing. And sincerity is a very, very big necessity. All I want to say for the youngsters is that we have come to a time when we are exposed a bit too much. All of a sudden, because of this electronic media, this media, that media, with the result, youngsters are likely to be swept away without knowing what they are doing. I want them to be proud of their culture, of their tradition. Not that we are superior compared to others, but that we are not inferior, positively not inferior. We inherited a very, very rich tradition and we have lots and lots to contribute towards the enrichment of the world of art. Thank you.